After all the seasons in Europe are done, we welcome Fabrizio Romano to discuss the future of so many players and managers. What will happen to Kylian Mbappé and PSG? What about Cristiano Ronaldo and Andrea Pirlo now that Juventus does have Champions League for next season? Liverpool, Chelsea, Tottenham, so many teams in the Premier League are looking for business as the season ends. And Zinedine Zidane, will he be Real Madrid's manager next season? All this and much more. Fabricio Romano begins right now. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Kigo Lasso on this Monday. And Monday only means one thing. It's Fabricio Romano. And this is a special one because it's the one right after the domestic seasons in Europe have ended a wild weekend, Fabrizio. How are you, my friend? I'm fine, I'm fine, thank you. Big pleasure to be together again. We can start with transfers now, not just Euros, but also transfers and so happy. But also, as you said, crazy weekend for the European leagues, really from Atletico Madrid to Italy to Lille winning the league. Incredible and also in the Premier League, obviously, what happened in the Champions League zone. So it's been fantastic, really. Fantastic. And as you mentioned, it's really uh, Fabrizio season now because all the little <laughs> plans and all the transfers are going to happen. I mean, it's always Fabrizio season, but really once we begin uh, with the domestic seasons over, that's when it gets really interesting. So Fabrizio, let's begin uh, with PSG. Losing League A to Lyon. Amazing story. We'll get to that in a second. Well done to Lyon, of course. But PSG, Mauricio Pochettino, they won Coupe de France. Well done, but they didn't win the Champions League. So obviously there's a lot to think about for Mauricio Pochettino and PSG. I think it's safe to say that Pochettino's not going anywhere. Obviously he just joined in January. Neymar just signed a new contract, but Kylian Mbappé, that's the big one there, Fabrizio. What can you tell me about Kylian Mbappé and his future? Yes, because yesterday the president of Paris Saint-Germain immediately after the match, Nasser al said Mbappé is staying and convinced he will be player of Paris Saint-Germain also in the next season. So the position for Paris Saint-Germain is still so clear. And it's a similar situation to the Harry Kane one at Tottenham, you know. Player maybe is not convinced about the situation. With Mbappé it's a bit different because he's negotiating a new contract with Paris Saint-Germain, but there is still no agreement between Mbappé and Paris Saint-Germain about the length of the contract, about money, about the salary. And that's why Real Madrid are still hoping to do the big one with Mbappé this summer. But Paris Saint-Germain are in the same position. They don't want to let him go. And so let's see what happens in the next week, but will be really interesting because at the moment there is still no agreement between Mbappé and Paris, but the president wants to keep the player. So it's an open race, an open situation for Kylian Mbappé. Yeah, and, and Mbappé himself, uh, I believe, by uh, uh, RMC Sport was, you know, to him, the project. It's about the project. He wants to make sure that PSG's future and clearly there's going to be uh, more business being done in PSG. So what, what could happen with PSG, Fabrizio? Aside from Mbappé signing a contract, who could they realistically get? I mean, I know we've talked about Deli Ali and stuff, but are there, is there any, with all due respect to Deli Ali, is there anybody bigger you think that could maybe go to PSG? Well, to be honest, it depends by Mbappé because Mbappé is leaving the club. Obviously, they had to sign a top striker. And when I say top striker, I mean really big, big one. If Mbappé is staying, maybe they will go for this kind of player, like Dele Alli, for, so an important midfielder, or also maybe something on the defense. They want a new right back also. So they have like two or three positions to cover, and let's see what happens with Mbappé. So that's the plan for Paris Saint-Germain. But uh, really, they want an important midfielder, and they are looking for something new also in the defense. But it will be so important to understand what happens with Mbappé, because this is, this is like the key for the transfer market of, of Paris Saint-Germain. No, very good point. He basically drives all the chips and it depends yes. on what happens with him. All right, let's just stick in Liga for a second. Lille, they just won Liga. Amazing. More than incredible. a decade. In, it's just incredible. Conceded only 23 goals, I believe, the entire season. They have some CONCACAF talent in Jonathan David. Timothy Weah as well is there. But uh, Yilmaz, my God, the Turkish star. What a tremendous uh, name with him. But what can you tell me about this team and specifically their manager? Because... What's the future with uh, Christophe Galtier? Oh, first of all, about Lille, I have to say that part of this incredible success, this, this incredible story, is the former sport director that left Lille some months ago, this Luis Campos, the Portuguese one. He was working in Monaco. He discovered Mbappé. He signed Mbappé for free for Monaco. And you remember Monaco were in the semi-final of the Champions League with Mbappé. He signed him, Bernardo Silva, Fabinho, a lot of players from nothing to the semi-final of, of Champions League. And now he did it again with Lille, signing players like uh, Jonathan David, as you mentioned, Burak Ilmas for free. He signed him for free. When I remember <laughs> Italian clubs had this play, 
player offered. I remember Italian clubs, new Italian clubs in the Serie A coming from the second division, offered Burakil Mas for free. They said no, they turned down the opportunity and now Lille signed him and look at what a season they had. So congrats to Lille, congrats really to these players and to Luis Campos, but also to Christophe Galtier. As you said, he did an amazing job as, as manager and he's going to leave Lille because... You know, the feeling also for him is that they did a masterpiece, something incredible, but it's really difficult to repeat these kind of things also for one more season. And that's why he's leaving. He has an important bid from Nice. And so he maybe stays in France with Nice ready to make him sign a contract in, in the next days. Amazing. Amazing. A, a great point about your mass. Uh, rejected by so many and look what he happens. Now he's league uh, champion. All right, let's leave France. Let's go to Italy. Let's go to your Italy, Fabrizio Romano. An unbelievable weekend. I mean, when you enter Milan, at the Scudetto, AC Milan, Atalanta, AC Milan, get the job done. They end up second. So as you tweeted, as we all remember, Zlatan Ibrahimovic will be in the Champions League next year. Uh, fantastic. Atalanta as well. Well done, Gasperini. But it was all about Juventus. Juventus, I'm telling you, Fabrizio, Juventus fans should be sending some money to Verona players because <laughs> Napoli failing to beat Verona means that Juventus, after beating Bologna, they get Champions League. So many things to talk about Juventus. Well done, well done on getting Champions League. But, uh, I mean, listen, the, it, it's something that they should do every single season, you know, at the very least. What can you tell me about Juventus specifically, Andrea Pirlo? Because I'm still not convinced, but I'm sure he wants to stay. What's the latest? I can tell you that um, like three weeks ago, Pirlo was 90% out from Juventus for the next season. Then the situation changed a bit because he was beating Inter and the same with Sassuolo in a difficult match. And then also winning the Coppa Italia, the domestic cup here in Italy against Atalanta with really yep. good match on Wednesday. So the situation changed in the last weeks for Pirlo. And now, as you said, they've been also lucky because Verona was drawing against Napoli and it was an incredible one because Verona are fighting for nothing. They are staying in the Serie A. They had no, no targets in the last weeks, but they were having a great match against Napoli. And so Juventus are in the Champions League. But as you say, it is part of the game for Juventus. Nothing special, obviously. So that's why they will consider the position of Andrea Pirlo in the next days. Immediately after the match, Pirlo was saying yesterday, I want to stay 100%. I'm happy with this team. I'm happy with this club. My idea is to stay. And the club has not said anything to me. So he's still waiting for the position from Juventus. In the next days, they will meet. So we will see what happens with Andrea Agnelli and Andrea Pirlo. But for sure, at the moment, he has some possibilities. Three weeks ago, he was 90% out. Now he has some chances. Let's see what happens. But really, we have a lot of rumors about Zidane here in Italy for Juventus. But I see it really, really difficult at the moment. There is nothing with Juventus. Well, we're going to talk about Real Madrid in a second. But one quick thing about Juventus, of course, Cristiano Ronaldo did not start. Apparently, technical reasons. Apparently, he was tired. What's going on? And is, Ronaldo, is this a sign that he's leaving? Uh, let's see about this point, but for sure being in the Champions League changed the situation for Juventus. You know, if, if Juventus were out of the Champions League, obviously I don't see Cristiano out of the Champions, as we say together on last Kegolazo episode. It was really difficult. Now they are in the Champions League. So Cristiano has one year left on his contract with Juventus. So now there are chances also for Cristiano to stay. Immediately after the match, he was tweeting with Juventus, uh, posting with Juventus slogan, Fino la fine, till the end. So he's still involved in Juventus' idea. And let's see now what happens in, with, with the meeting between Jorge Mendes, Cristiano and Juventus director. They will meet. They will plan and talk together about the future. And many clubs are waiting to understand what happens with Cristiano. Because as we said from Bappé, when you have this kind of stars, they are the biggest part of the domino. So many clubs are waiting to see what happens. But with the Champions League, the situation is obviously a bit different for Cristiano Ronaldo. Because without Champions League, he was also maybe out of Juventus. Yeah, the same with Erling Haaland, right? Borussia Dortmund, as long as they have Champions League, things become easier. So a little bit easier for Ronaldo and Juventus to figure things out now that at least... They have Champions League, but Pirlo's future remains. Okay, uh, let's move to Real Madrid. Uh, Fab, Zinedine Zidane, plenty of talk that, you know, he's, he's presumed going to leave, but we're not sure yet. I mean, they have Champions League. That's fine. They, they didn't win La Liga. They did win it last season. Apparently, the players don't want Zidane to leave. He's obviously very popular with the club, with the squad. What, what's he thinking? Because he's always had a, a soft spot for Juventus, of course, where he played. Uh, as well. What, what's the latest on Senedin Zidane? 
Yes, the feeling around Zidane, around Real Madrid, around the board is that Zidane is leaving, but it's not decided yet. He has to decide after talking with the club, so he's going to meet the directors and decide together. The feeling is, as I said, that he wants to leave and he wants to change. But Real Madrid are not going to sack Zinedine Zidane. So, or he decides to leave, or they will continue with him and they're happy with him. As you said, he's so popular, he's a winner, so he's normal, and he's a Real Madrid legend, so that's why they're happy with him and they want to continue with him. But if Zizou decides to leave, they will go for a different manager and keep an eye on the name of Massimiliano Allegri because his priority is Real Madrid. He's waiting for Real Madrid. Napoli are calling him. Many clubs are calling him, but he's always saying, my priority is Real Madrid. So he's waiting for Real. Keep an eye also on Raul Gonzalez Blanco as the other opportunity in the list for Real Madrid. But in some days, we will have the final answer. It depends by Zinedine Zidane. All right, let's finish up in the Premier League. Uh, Chelsea, they lost to Aston Villa. Uh, as I'm smiling by saying that, but they did get Champions League, so that's fine. And obviously, they got a Champions League final. Liverpool, amazing Liverpool, amazing that they managed to get third and get Champions League final. Tottenham beat Leicester City. A couple of things here: Harry Kane. Any 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 late uh, things on him? Obviously, we know so much has been going on. Winning against Leicester City helps. They do have Conference League soccer next year, but is that enough? Because so clearly, he wants more. What's the latest on him and anything else in the Premier League as well? Yes, he wants Champions League. He wants Champions League. He's been so clear in public and also in private when he spoke with people from the club. So he wants to leave. He wants to leave, but Tottenham position is still the same. They want to keep Harry Kane. They're convinced that he has two years left on his contract and they can keep Harry Kane for one more season. So let's see what happens, but it will be so interesting to see what will be the position from, from Tottenham. Also, if Harry Kane now will communicate again directly that he wants to leave and Manchester City are the favorite at the moment they are the most interesting club and they want to try really to sign Harry Kane this summer so keep an eye on this player because in the next weeks we will have some important updates for for Kane also talking about Premier League clubs for Liverpool was really important to be in the Champions League also because the financial situation Jurgen Klopp always talked about this is important to understand that for top clubs being in the Champions League is important not just because Obviously, you are a top club and you have to be in the Champions League, but also for the financial way is something really, really key. And that's why Liverpool now will be prepared to complete the deal for Ibrahim Konate. I expect him to be the first signing for Liverpool uh, in, in the summer. And also keep an eye on the situation of Wijnaldum because he's leaving the club as a free agent. Many clubs are interested from Spain, from France, but he has still to decide. So in the next days, he will make a decision with, with, with his agent. And also from the Premier League, he was scoring again yesterday with Manchester City. His last goal Sergio Aguero who has been incredible for the club a real legend and he's going to join Barcelona as we said two years of contract agreement 100% done it will be signed in the next days Aguero will play for Barca and also Memphis Depay is really really close to join Barcelona it's not done yet as Aguero but he's another target and Barcelona are working to sign both Aguero and Depay Plenty, plenty to cover and plenty more will come. Fabrizio Romano will join us every Monday. And in addition, if there's an emergency pod or transfer, plenty more to come. Fabrizio Romano, thank you so much, my friend. Have a great, great beginning to your week. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Always be a pleasure. And see you soon on Kegolazo and on CBS Sports. Always a big pleasure. <laughs> Hey, everybody. I want to thank Fabrizio Romano for joining me today. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Que Golazo Pod. We are also on Apple Podcasts. Please follow us and leave a five-star rating and review. We're on Spotify, Stitcher, CBSSports.com, and your CBS Sports app. And we are on YouTube. Plenty more to come as we have our Europa League preview, our Europa League recap after the game, and our Champions League preview and recap. So much more. Que Golazo never sleeps. Thank you so much for supporting us. Have a great beginning to your week.